So I am closing the public hearing at 9.10. And to the committee members, I ask, is there anything you guys have heard that has inspired you to consider or reconsider, keeping in mind the rules that are always in play here? Mr. DeLuca. Uh, given some additional information on the town warrant article, the budget. Budget was not discussed. I thought we did discuss it. Did someone discuss? Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Mr. Pierce. Sorry. Yes, Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and based on this, I, I don't believe uh, we could make a change to that. Is that correct or incorrect? Based on what? Um, you have to be on the winning side to make a motion to reconsider. Is that your question? Ms. Regina Brown. I'd like to make a motion to reconsider okay. the budget warrant uh, article 12. Uh, 12. Yeah, the winning side was nay. Regina did vote nay, so I need a second from someone. I'll second it. Vote from someone that voted nay. I think I did vote nay. On did you vote nay? Well, we can check it. I'm the only one that voted yes on that, so if there was six no. Yeah, and Jerry abstained. Jerry abstained. Yeah. That's right. correct. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we are now reconsidering the uh, budget article, which is on the monitor. The number, please. Number What's the number? Four. Well, so can I have discussion now? Please begin, Regina. It's your motion. Okay. So we received a uh, letter here from the town manager directed to the chairman of this budget committee and uh, saying that based on the budget committee's recent votes on the municipal budget, town staff has submitted the results to the DRA as required. After reviewing the information supplied, DRA, that's the Department of Revenue Administration. <coughs> Sorry, Jim has requested we specifically bring certain concerns to your attention. Please see attached email from our DRA representative, which I don't have a copy of that, but I think it went out to the entire committee today. No, um, additionally, DRA has indicated that if the budget committee continues to not recommend the budget as outlined in the warrant article, this action may have significant consequences. To eliminate this concern, it is the recommendation of town staff, this is from our town manager, that the budget committee come to agreement on a budget figure that the majority of the budget committee can support and vote to recommend in the warrant article. So I would recommend that we either come to a number that we can agree to or we go back to the number that was originally presented to the budget committee from the town manager and the board of selectmen. The motion is to reconsider. Is there any further discussion on reconsideration? Seeing none, all those in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hand. Okay, we got Mr. Frank DeLuca, Ms. Regina Barnes, Ms. Robert Ladd, Mr. Jerry Zanoy, and Mr. Stephen LeBranch. I believe that's five and thus a majority. So we will reconsider. Now you want a motion to recommend, I assume? I do. I would like a motion to recommend. Uh, yeah. So we're not going to try to come to our own number, or do we want to use? I'll make a motion to recommend. Well, we, we Recommend the operating budget. <laughs> this budget committee that worked for months did come up with a number. Hmm. It's right there. That's the number. It's right. We reduced the suggested number by some small amount. I think it was about thirty thousand dollars. But that's the number that was this budget committee put forth last Thursday <coughs> night. That was voted on. I think it was unanimous to make that the number. And so then, then, we had the then, the, then the chairman asked for, uh, to, does it, you know, the recommend, okay. recommend the number that we just put forth, and I voted yes, thinking, and then everybody voted no, and I thought I was in the twilight zone for a few minutes. Um, <laughs> I know how and, that feels. It, yeah, and so, um, and that's, so that's. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a, a motion that we recommend, recommend the number that we that number. agreed to the other night. Yes. Okay. So I recommend I make the motion. You second? No. Well, I'll, I'll second it. If you'd like to make okay, the motion. Okay. So can we vote? You guys done now? Yes, we are. Okay. I think. Anyone wish to uh, speak to the motion, which is to recommend uh, the budget, the proposed budget number, which is twenty-eight million one hundred forty-one thousand eight hundred eighty-two dollars. Any discussion? No, I. I didn't read that Mr. Zanoy. Uh, I have trouble with that number, uh, and I'm going to vote against that number. Um, 
I'm not happy with the town's budgeting system. I've watched it for at least 10 years now. What I see is this. Budgets get started in June or July or August by the department heads, probably in July. They, done, they get done with their budget. They finish their budget. It goes into the town manager. He historically has not mitigated or attenuated that budget by any large amount. This year, I think it was 0.07% down. It then goes to the Board of Selectmen. This year, they increased it by 0.1% or something like that. So I deem this budgeting process flawed and faulty and irresponsible and not worth a penny of the effort that went into it. And I have looked through this budget book, 219, and I can tell you it's full of puff and fluff. Hours I spent since last time we met. Line by line I went through this. Looked over the last, as a matter of fact, 017. Looked over 18 actuals to date. Looked over what they're asking for. Many puff lines. I don't intend to vote for that number. The only number that I would vote for if you wanted one was a default number. I Thank pass. You. Thank you, Jerry. Anyone else wish Mr. Wobbler? I concur with Mr. Zanoy. Um, just for the public at home, the proposed budget is about just under 600000 higher than the default budget. Um, my concerns that I share wholeheartedly with uh, Jerry Zanoy have so much to do with the budget preparation and what is not being told the public, and that is, you know, we walked in here to review the budget and we find out that in September we outsourced the assessor's department, you know, and, and just things throughout the year. We, we take a parking department and we hire, they propose hire a parking director and you take away 30% of the responsibilities of the parking rec director but through no fault to the parking rec director, who I know very well, his salary goes up $21,000, uh, 23, I think. Um, there's just too much, and I've watched all the meetings. Um, and you know, I want to comment, and I think one of the selectmen said tonight about, well, why wouldn't we recommend? Well, the problem with that is there are some things in the budget maybe some of us like, but most of it I don't like. And I can't recommend a quarter and not three quarters. Um, we would have had to cut $600,000, and I think to Jerry's point, I don't see, and it's much like the subject we talked about earlier because it all adds up, I don't see any trend that is helping the taxpayers um, positions after positions. Um, the municipal resources thing really irked me. Uh, it's just like, so let's just take what they tell us on salary. Let's just give everybody these big raises. Um, you know. We hear a lot of people, oh, there's 50 people here tonight, 100. There's a lot of people in the community who agree with us. It's getting out of hand. We want to be able to propose a budget. Mr. Pluff remembers in the 90s, and some of the department heads that were here in the 90s and, and former, um, remember we had several years where we approved budgets, many, many years. And there were also some lean years. Jerry, you remember bringing your kids up here? There were some lean years in, in the, the 90s as well. Uh, you know, I kept looking at this and looking at this, just part and parcel of the entire spectrum of what I believe is, is just, uh, you know, there wasn't, as far as I saw, a lot of great discussion on this, and I, I just cannot um, support something that is $600,000 more than the default. I even think the default is high, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. We cannot, you know, I can't recommend or whatever default budget. We know that. But I, I don't plan to change my tune at all. I'm definitely against this budget. And I will say, for the public at home, to the gentleman to my right that has received a lot of unfair press this weekend, that I think he has been more than fair in establishing agendas for the, week, for the, uh, the meetings. I think he's fine-tuned and diagnosed and drilled down on virtually every article and every piece of budgetary process, even things that I learned about this year, thanks to his help. Um, so that being said, we take our votes very serious. I, I cannot support this uh, budget at all. I cannot re recommend it. 
Anyone else wish to discuss the motion on the table, which is the uh, budget? I like to talk about it. Ms. Barnes. <laughs> so there's a lot of things I see that are wrong around here, but just because we get upset and we think that we want to punish certain people or certain departments, or I'm not even quite sure, to be honest with you, I don't even know where to start. But I think that I know our town management and our finance director works very, very hard. I see it. I used to do a lot of, not to the extent that our finance director does, but I worked in a, a lot with those reports for a long, long time. And things are constantly changing, and she is constantly updating us. I think maybe some things might not be as clairvoyant as some people would like them to be, and hopefully that's something that we can change. But going back down to a default budget, now actually this year, 18's operating budget, or whatever you want to call it, is actually 17's budget, because we had a default budget last year. Right. So, and I understand people's concerns. You know, it's taxes go up, and we're not really, it doesn't, doesn't seem to ever be getting revenue to offset anything around here, which is very frustrating to me. <coughs> but at the same time, the difference is if you looked, which some people weren't interested in looking at the information that uh, the finance director had put together, the 5% increase from now right up until what the Board of Selectmen presented <coughs> to the budget, I believe was about 5%. Christy, is that right? A little less than 5. A little less than 5? Okay, so we're going to take, we have 17's numbers. These are 17's expenses that are in this budget. And so now we're in 19. So that's an average of about 2.5% increase. You look anywhere. I mean, if your budget, your own budget, doesn't increase by 2 or 3% a year, I mean, you're doing something right. You're going to try so it doesn't, but chances are, I mean, I looked, like I told you, seven, eight budgets a week, annual. Quarterly, sometimes they increase 2 to 3%. <coughs> so I think for what we have, we have a lot of overtime in this town. There, every department has it. And it's just the way it is. So it's like, do we want guys that know what they're doing and they don't mind doing the overtime? Or do we want, you know, and we do have to do that, do we want outsiders to come in? I personally would like to make Hampton be Hampton again, where we have everyone working here and everyone's happy. And it doesn't feel like that to me now. And I don't like it. But just slicing the budget for no reason is not working. It's never worked. It will never work. Okay? So. I am supporting the number that I think Mr. Warburton made a recommendation last week. I'm in support of that, and I would like to see that number move forward, and that is why I reconsider my vote tonight. Mr. Zanoy. Yeah, I, I can just add further add on here a little bit, and that is I looked over the last 10 or 11 budgets, and the majority of budgets, six out of, I think, six out of that number were rejects back to the default budget. Uh, and several of the ones that passed had numbers very close to the default numbers and hence they passed, I guess, from what I remember. But I say to myself, okay, gee, I wonder if the failure of that budget is going to be discussed at the next selectman's meeting so a post-mortem occurs. Never hear it. Never hear it. Hence, we have Groundhog's Day. Same process is repeated year after year that I just went through. 0.07 decreased by the 0.07 percent decreased by the town manager. 0.14 increase by the uh, BOS, and then it comes into this August community here. And I believe, I believe that the public is looking for credibility, <coughs> not necessarily for to cut for cut's sake. They're looking for credibility of the process, I believe, and they're not seeing it. No post-mortems ever that I have seen discussed on television. We lost the budget. We have a, all that effort from July through the, now. We lost it. What did we do wrong? Where did we go astray? Where were the biggest increases? Did we really need them? I mean, how much did we need them? None. 
I see them in here. For the last three days, I've studied line by line. I see them in here. There wasn't a year that I didn't look at every single line item. There's 420 line items in this budget. It used to be, anyway, for the town budget. I looked at every line item. The last five years worth of spending. What are they asking for? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it cost justifiable? Is it rational? Why are they jumping 10, 20, 30 percent? You look into the book to try to find the answer, no rationale. Now, sometimes this book has got some rationale in it. And it has improved since the last three or four years, since uh, Christie has been working at it. We're not there yet. We're not there. The process is not credible, hence we get defaults. <coughs> Anybody else that hasn't spoken on this, Mr. Ladd? If I were a member of the community, I would be so confused by the process and the votes for, you know, it's the old expression, first I voted for it before I voted against it. This $28,141,882 amount was voted by this budget committee at prior meetings. It is literally about $30,000 less than the original proposed Board of Selectmen budget. So it seems to me we could vote tonight and we could vote against this number, which creates a default budget, or in the alternative, according to the DRA, it may create a whole budget crisis of some sort. Or we, we could come back next week and we'd have another vote, and it would be different than this week or last week. We have to get some consistency if we to give direction to the community, which I don't think they can get from these contradictory votes. Anybody else that has not spoken? Mr. DeLuca. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> I, I, I've looked at this, and I've studied the book, and I don't have a problem with the current budget, all right? You had a default budget last year, correct? And I believe you had one the previous year as well? I think we had an operating one the previous okay. year. You have cost increase. Materials go up, the sand goes up, you know, when they spread it on the road. All those costs are incurring, all right? They're just translating these costs to the taxpayer. When I was in business and I worked for a major corporation, when we incurred costs, like we wanted to improve a plant, we passed those costs on to the consumer. They're called price increases, all right? I'm sure many of you went and bought beer, and one year that 30-pack was $15.99, the next year it was $16.99. Those are cost increases. We're passing along costs. I'm sure the selectmen reviewed these budgets. There are some I question, okay, that I think a lot of the departments are taking a hit on some areas that they probably should have increased those areas. But I think they came back with a reasonable budget and that those numbers reflect increased costs in doing business in buying material for the town and they've kept it at a reasonable number under 5%. The cost of living CPI this year is roughly about 3%. All right, so I'm, I'm looking at this as probably <coughs> over the last two years they proved it. So I'm in favor of the budget that they proposed. Anybody else who has not spoken? Mr. LeBranch. <coughs> when, I, when I seconded the motion, I made some comments about um, this number is the number that this budget committee came up with. This isn't the selectman's number. It's not the but the uh, the, the uh, town manager's number, it's not the ask from the department heads, it's the number that we came up with. And I still don't understand, <laughs> it, 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 maybe it's just me, I don't understand how we could com work, come up with a number, and then the majority say they don't like the number. Why didn't we come up with a different number then? Uh, that's the part that you know, that's the part that says like a disconnect in my brain. I just don't understand it. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Moore. 
I would just like to say something in general because we keep hearing about the CPI. And one of the things we're looking at here is trying to look at things and improve them, realizing some things go up in price, and, which is absolutely correct. But there's sometimes you can count some fat somewhere. And how many people are looking out the fat? And I brought up the example before, the company I worked for, Living Mutual. Beginning of the year, the management said 10% cost across the board, which we did. Nobody was fired. Everybody got the raises, but we were able to look at and find some fat. But I keep hearing the CPI, and a lot of people within the town of Hampton are very heavily dependent on the Social Security. And I've heard it presented here that the cost of living issues is 2.8%. 2.85. Right. But back in 2009, and I'm going to go 2009 to 9, and I'm reading from the Social Security right now. 0% increase in 2009. 0 increase in 2010. 3.6 in 2011, 2012, 1.7, 2013, 1.5, 2014, 1.7, 2015, 0. And these are a lot of, you know, some of us lucky don't need all that. At the same time, 2016, 0.3, tenths of 1%. 2017, 2.0 and this year 2.8. What I'm trying to express there, along with these other costs go up like this, and some of the people who, and I know a couple of select people, ex-select people, who are very tight on affording their houses and depend on a good majority of their income on Social Security. That's all I'm trying to point out here. So we're trying to look at the entire picture. And in reference to the entire picture, you can't keep having costs going up. I'm just suggesting, which I did the other night, that we can try to look at areas and work with different people and work with the school committee for other things that possibly we can come up with ideas that might make things more efficient, most cost effective. We have done things with cost improvement where today we can do things that with two people we used to do with five because they changed the process to the other. But you take the three people and you have them doing something else. You're not trying to get rid of people. You're trying to get more money for whatever you're doing. That's all. But keep in mind that some of these people with all these figures, when you're saying 5% for the school board and 5% for, or 4.9 in reference to the operating budget, other people at 2.8, even though they got 2.8 this year, they didn't get it last year or the year before the year. That's all I'm trying to point out. Thank you. Mr. Clark, do you have a response? Would you like to? Well, at the, at the bottom it says physical impact note. It said the 281 is an increase of 1,299,570, more than the budget amount adopted in 2018 of 26,842,312. So that, that, that statement right there says that it went up a long ways. Yep. In my opinion. All set? Yep. <coughs> Everyone has spoken once except me, so I'm going to do that now. The, uh, I know Mr. Waddell also spoke to that question that you're raising, Mr. LeBranch, and that is, how can we produce a number and then not support it, essentially? Well, the number that we put on this Warren article was the best number that we could come up with as a committee. I know firsthand that almost every, every member of this committee has called me up at various times asking me what if, what if, what if about amendments and so forth. And so I know there were at least five somewhat significant cuts that were being discussed uh, among two, three members, which I was not involved in because I offered no opinion. I just simply talked about the, uh, the substance and implications of whatever they were suggesting and, and, and so forth. So then the question comes, well, we only had one motion to amend at, at our <coughs> hearing. What happened to the other three or four? And my understanding was that uh, those who were thinking about making those amendments found they couldn't get it, uh, a third vote, so they just dropped it, didn't want to waste the committee's time dealing with it. Now, these, these ideas were coming from three different members. And so I'm guessing that each of those three members like, well, if I can't get this through, I can't support whatever number we come up with kind of thing. And while the committee agreed that's the best number we can agree to as a committee, it's not a number that necessarily we can embrace. 
The question is, the, the question was twofold this year uniquely versus the previous years. Previous years was we put a number out there, and however we voted on that number, it was assumed that that same vote recommended our, reflected our recommendation. And I had observed that that was not true. In previous years, the Budget Committee was voting on a number that they felt as though they could just get passed in the committee and be done with the process. Never was there any idea by many of them that they actually wanted that number recommended, but it just by default would get recommended. So this year there was two votes. It was also done for SAU 90. We voted on a particular number that we could agree to as a committee as the best number we as a committee could come up with, and that's the number that's reflected here. And then subsequently decided, okay, the next one is the question, which do we recommend the, the voters vote for? That number, which is the best we came up with, or the default number? So there are two different questions that produced two different or seemingly different answers. But I wanted to be clear, I think that is basically what happened. We came up with the best number we could as a committee, and then we decided as a committee that we preferred the default number over the proposed <coughs> number. So hopefully that explains how that kind of weirdness showed up. As far as the, uh, as far as the uh, communique from the DRA is concerned, uh, it's, it's noteworthy that the <coughs> Department of Revenue Administration's communication was uh, generated at 3.16 this afternoon, and we voted on this last Thursday. Yeah. The query was sent out to them today, and they responded today, and I received this uh, something after 4 o'clock this afternoon. Okay, so that's the timeline we're dealing with here. Now, the town manager, and the Board of Selectmen have gone out of their way in previous meetings to point out, and I have done so as well here on the Budget Committee, that the DRA is not an enforcement entity, they're an advisory entity when it comes to municipal matters. And so, the Board of Selectmen has, on more than one occasion, rejected the DRA's recommendations, as they call them, and uh, so I see no reason why we should just automatically bend knee to the DRA recommendation on this matter. They're not clear as to what will be the consequence. They use the word may have implications. Well, of course, everything we do has implications, so I mean, tell me something that's not obvious. I have my own reasons for voting as I did, and I did vote in the majority on this. That is to say, I voted negative, uh, no, no recommendation, which is distinct from everyone on this committee. I, it, I abstained from the first vote. Yeah, I know you did. And you're switching to a no, I understand. Absolutely. <clears throat> but for me, I'm, I'm, I voted no for reasons which were unique, and there's no reason me putting them because none of you buy into my argument. <laughs> so I won't bother going down that road. Um, so anyone <coughs> now for the second round, <coughs> Regina Bonds. Mr. Chairman, I yeah. vote the way I want to vote, too. Absolutely. So we have something in common. Um, so I want to say something. So we have a 1.299570. That is $650,000 a year increase because, like I said, this budget is the budget that was actually prepared in 17 with the exception of contracts and wages that want either a contractual or have already gone to the voters previously in separate Warren articles. So, like I said, that's a, that is a 2.3% increase, I think. Yeah, 2.3. So we can either, we can have a default budget this year, and more likely than not, that number is going to go from 1.3 million to, I don't know, Christy, maybe like another five, 600, say, let's say it goes up to 2 million. And then what we're going to default, we're going to have a default budget there, and we're going to have even way more or less than we actually need to operate anything. Now. We had two emergencies this year, I think, two, mosh pipe, three, that were handled pretty quick, and some people didn't even barely know about them. So I think management knows what they're doing, uh, and we have to let them do it. The budget is, uh, 
what the town needs. The expenses are never going to go away. Actually, they might be more than what the budget's showing right now. What we need to figure out is how we're going to get money back into the community. And I got to tell you right now, Chief, I'm not picking you in your department, but you have, it always sticks out in my mind when we're talking about the budget, the outside services. I mean, that's like almost $800,000 of this $27 million. All that money, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars of it, is spent July, August, September, and I'm going to say that now, all the way through March 12th, because that's all the extra, whatever it is, bringing police from other communities in, whatever the chief, deputy chief, determine what needs to be done down that beach. It's got to be done because if we don't do it, no one's going to do it. Just the way it is. It's what we got to do. Same thing with the fire. Okay. You can say whatever you want happened 10 years ago, <coughs> Jerry, but we didn't have 60, 80, 100 foot buildings and they're just going to keep coming. There's nothing we can do. We didn't have a big nursing home down on 27. We didn't have a um, hotel right out down by CRs. Like, we need a plan is what we need. The first article that we talked about for the town, that's what we need the most. What are we going <coughs> to do? Who are we going to invest? And you know what else is in this budget that is not in the default budget? The outside services that MRI, I know a lot of people don't like MRI, but the reason why I like MRI is because they're going outside of Hampton and looking at something and coming back to us and telling us what they see. And I'm not sure what the amount was. Christy, could you help me out with what I projected to give, which all the MRI increases that are in the operating budget, that was my idea that I presented to the management and then it came to the Board of Selectmen. Why? Because the town employees, you see what they do every day and they're not getting what they should be getting. So we can continue to ignore that or we can try to keep them in the town working for us so we don't have to go get new people and we don't have our tax assessor leave and now we have it, you know, we don't have him there anymore. Luckily, we still get to deal with him, but he's not there every day anymore, which is what we've always had and we're always used to. Things take money, and I think that, uh, yeah, we can probably be a little bit more cautious, but I wouldn't say that we're not cautious, and I hope that the committee can uh, re-vote on this and we can see what happens for the number we agreed to, the 28 million, 141, 882. Thank you, Regina. You're welcome. Anyone else wish to speak, Mr. Zanoy? Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of our costs should be paid for by the state. Where is the status of this court case that was moving and now it's stuck in limbo? Um, you know, and we don't hear anything on television about it. Right there with you, Derry. Okay? So, there's fire, there's police, and there's DPW that put a lot of hours and put a lot of bucks down there. The state should be giving us money of kind to meet those services. They're not. But we're not aggressively pursuing them like bulldogs either. Okay? I agree. Now, we have politics are involved here. Okay? Now, second thing, the marsh pipe. If a good root cause analysis was done on the first failure, we'd have never needed the emergency. The contractor put the boulder under the pipe. BS. Okay? <laughs> Turned Terry, out a Terry, year later Terry, when you Terry, had a Terry, we're talking about the budget. Stay well, I'm budget. talking about, well, she's, you know, throwing laurels over here. We still have and to I'm, deal with it. Hold on, hold No on. matter what. You have a budget that was, was improperly prepared, in my opinion. It's been this way for, since, I've been following it since 2009. It's attenuated 0.07 by the town manager. 0.07 and 0.1 increase by the, by the board of selectmen. Don't tell me that's budgeting. 50 years I spent in this, I know what budgeting is. 0.073 by the town manager. Percent. Percent. 0.073 percent dropped. It came into the BOS. 0.14 percent increase. That's not budgeting. Groundhog Day, that's what you got. Uh, what happened to the brewery agreement? I don't know anything about it. And what happened to the status of phase one? Sewer projects. Where are we? What did we buy? What did we approve? I should hear it every month by Chris or Jennifer. I don't hear it. I don't care about how many dogs were picked up off the street. 
I want to know, and the, and the 10 million or 11 million we voted on, what has taken place? What did they purchase? What process did they improve? What building did we afford? There were some pictures of buildings that needed was falling apart or whatever. I don't hear anything. Don't ever ask me for phase two until I understand what happened in phase one. Pretty expeditiously. Because you won't, I won't support it. You know, here we are. It, 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 almost a year is over with. I don't hear what we've done in phase one. What did we spend? What did we plan? Where, what, did, what, what, did, what items were involved and what did we spend? Did we, did we, did we follow our plan or not? Budgetary budget. Okay? Budgetary. But yes. Yeah. Well, I'm giving you examples of things. It goes on and on. The amount of money that's accumulated in the cable fund because 100% of that is going into the cable committee. There's like $400,000 in there right now. I mean, it's pathetic. I mean, I can point out 20 items within the next 10 minutes. And then oh. I look at this. Jerry, Jerry. And then I look at this. Jerry, hold on. I can't hear you. There's too much conversation in the audience. I appreciate yeah. some cooperation. But, but when I look at this, and I start going through the line items, I take exception with Frank on this. It's just not cost of living in here, Frank. I understand. Frank, All right, we're big, the big percentages in here. Jump it. You all set, Jerry? I'm all done. I've, I, I've spent on the subject. Mr. LeBranch. <laughs> can we move? Can we, can we you don't move? want to follow Jerry, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, can, can we vote, perhaps? Yeah, we're getting there. Mr. Mr. Frank, you want to speak? I'm in agreement with Mr. LeBranch. Can we vote on this thing, please? I think we beat this thing to death. Any other discussion? Yeah. One other thing. <laughs> Mr. Zanoy. <laughs> here, comes, here comes another kicker. Ben, here, you know what we're going to be spending on warrant articles this year? We're going to be spending on warrant articles between the school and us. Uh, okay. The school. Oh. Here it is. Okay. On warrant articles for the town. From, at least my, I hope I've added up everything. I didn't count on designated fund balances and cemetery uh, contributions. $2,681,598 for the town, $476,171 for the school, for a total of $3,167,769 on top of the operational budgets. Taxes are going to rise. And if they continue with this rate, we will be at 10000 Pretty soon on an average family home. You all set, Jerry? Yeah, I'm done now. Mm -hmm. Quick, because I might have more. <laughs> well, one, one thought came to my mind, uh, Frank, when you were talking about beer going up. Was it your beer example? Uh, that was a perfect example, yes. That was a perfect example. Cost is still going up. It was a perfect example, but it was not a good analogy. If I choose not to buy the increased price of beer, no one's threatening to take my house away. If I don't pay my taxes, I guarantee you, I guarantee you there'll be a threat to take my house away. So the analogy is not apt. Buying beer is optional. Paying taxes is mandatory. Under threat of violence, if necessary, to remove you from your property. That's just the reality of taxes. Mr. Frank, you wish to speak. I'd like to respond to that. Sure. Now, let's take your home, for example. No, if it's mine. I want to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> if, the, if a major storm comes through, okay. Oh, no, better still. Better still. Let's say you need to replace your roof. It's 25, you know, 25 years old. You're having leaks. Damage is being done. You have to replace the roof. 20 years ago to replace your roof, it may have cost you $5,000. Today, that may be $8,000. Cost of duty. You're not going to not replace your roof because of the damage that's going to be done. But cost of materials went up, labor went up, so you're going to pay a little bit more. That's my choice. There's a difference between choice and mandatory. That's right. I can cover my roof with a top hole, and I don't have to replace it to avoid damage, you know. Can we so make be a real pain in the butt managing like the top to bowling, of course. Miss Miss Regina. 
Jerry, I agree with you. Good. But. No, no buts. No, there is a but. The problem I have when I look at the financials, which I'm not sure, I look at them a lot, but this town's assets, I don't know what the number is, but I know the percentage of what we haven't invested in is well over 50. It's about 50, probably 51, 52%. So the depreciation outweighs our what our actual assets are. What's happening is maybe money's not going to where it should be going, but there is a lot of people and a lot of departments in this town that are working with next to nothing. And we can't, it's not a question of, it's just the way it is. I mean, public works. All these questions, why weren't they asked when we had the public works in and when we had parks and recs and you know, it's like they all come at the last minute. I've been on this committee now for three years, and it's the last day they make all these decisions. Why? Why? Why is it like that? It's not fair. It's, you, you, transparency is supposed to work both ways. And why did I flip-flop? Because I had a lot of not transparent things happen to me through this whole budget process. But... I'm going to vote for the town's operating budget. That's what I'm going to do. And then at the deliberative session, if anyone doesn't like what I do, then they better come and they better tell me. And it's not going to be management and it's not going to be other selectmen. It's got to be the people of Hampton. What do you want? Because we can't keep going at this rate, but at the same time, we can't just slash stuff out for no reason or say that we're just wasting money. So I'm going to vote however I want, and I'm going to vote for this budget tonight that was presented by our budget committee last week. And <coughs> when we're ready to vote, let me know. That's the chair. Mr. LeBrange. Um, at the end of the day, the people in this town are going to tell you what they want. Right. Okay, because they're going to go to the, they're going to go and vote in March. Exactly. Okay, so then you'll have your answer. Okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. LeBranch. Anybody else? You know, I've got on the screen, I, I did an analysis a few weeks ago on the default versus proposed budget, and I observed a trend, and it seems to be there, that when the difference between the default and the proposed budget is around 400000 passing it becomes very iffy. When it goes above that, it seems to be a, an absolute no-brainer in terms of being defeated. Right now we're at what six hundred thousand dollar difference. Just, yeah, just under. And you know that that, that would be comparable to two thousand fifteen, was the six hundred forty four thousand dollar difference. That proposed budget receives thirty eight point two six percent of the vote. Thirty eight point two six percent of the vote. It seems as though the the, the, the voters are, are are primarily looking at the, the delta between the proposed proposed and the default budget. And you know unless we're able to drive the <coughs> now the gap in the delta that we're looking at right now, I don't I don't see the voters supporting this. Yeah. All right. Again, I have my own arguments, my own reasons, but no one believes, no one likes or whatever as to why I'm voting no. I mean, it really has nothing to do with that delta, but it appears as though the voters are using that as their gauge. And I just wanted to highlight that. Okay. Um, I see nothing wrong with us having a, putting a number out there, nothing at all wrong with putting a number out there as we did and then when we decide to recommend doing a comparison between default and proposed and coming up with a different answer I see nothing at all wrong with that and you see it consistent with our duties of office so does anyone else have anything else to say on this god-awful water article we spent so much time on it, it's only really nice go to it. any anything else then we're going to vote <coughs> The motion by Ms. Barnes, I believe, was to uh, recommend uh, the number seconded by Mr. Seconded LeBranch. By you got that? Uh, 28,141882. Yeah. Yes. All, those, yeah. all those in favor, please raise your hand. Mr. Frank DeLuca, Regina Barnes, Mike Plush, Bob Blad, and Stephen LeBranch. All those opposed, raise your hand. Mr. Warburton, Mr. Zanoy, Mr. Mora, and me. That's 5-4, I believe, right, Fred? 5-4 yeah. recommended.
right. Is there anything else that you wish to reconsider? I'd like to look at uh, the warrant article on the planning. Whichever uh, article. Which one are you talking about? Uh, well, but they changed. The yeah, they it's changed. It's the first one. The oh, very first one? The yeah. third article one? 11. Budget. Master plan. Okay. The master plan. Thank you. All right, the master plan we voted twice on now. The last vote was 2 6. So, did you vote? I nay. can't remember what I voted. Yeah, I, believe I think you. me and you were the, you the, voted. We were the minority. The yeah. yeah. So, uh, those who voted nay on this article are entitled, of course, to make a motion to reconsider if you so wish. I don't see anything. Any other ones you want to think about reconsidering? I'm hearing deafening silence here. Okay. Um, then we are done with the town... Uh, article. We reconsidered the budget and now recommended 5-4. I want to uh, basically close out this meeting.